The Lexus RX is Lexus' best-selling SUV right now. And this is the brand new 2024 Lexus RX 450 H+, meaning that it is a hybrid setup. So what we're going to do in this video is have a look at this design. I love the color. We're going to have a look at the front end, the side, the rear, the interior. And then, of course, we're going to take this for a drive. Let's start with having a look at what's underneath the hood of the 450H+. Plus. So this being a hybrid, you do have electric range, as I said, up to 37 miles. You have two electric motors in the front end, one in the rear. The total power output comes out to 304 horsepower, 367 pound-feet of torque, and it is all-wheel drive in EV mode as well. You have an 18.1 kilowatt-hour battery pack. It is a CVT gearbox. Since this is a hybrid, it does only come with a CVT gearbox. If you go with the non-hybrids, they actually come with eight-speed transmission, which is something that I would want to have in this one as well. Zero to 60 is done in 6.2 seconds. Top speed, 124 miles per hour. Fuel economy comes in at 36 city, 33 highway. The base price for this is $69,000. And I do love this nori green pearl that we have on this specific model is such a beautiful color, specifically in the sunshine. So let's close this up and let's do a quick walk around of this design. They refreshed the RX a couple of years ago now, and I think they did a great job. I've heard a lot of uh, opinions about the front end design, but in my opinion, I think it looks great. It does this Lexus tradition where you have a lot of lines going on all over the body but for some reason Lexus always managed to make it work even though some might call this a little over uh, over stylized I think every line here actually has a purpose and it flows really well so starting with the front end design and this new spindle grill that we have this is the main new feature this piece this sort of forehead that sticks out from a side view and I think it looks great. It adds some character to the front end design. You have full LED headlights in this case with the Lexus blade design here for the LED. It looks like it's a full headlight here, but this is actually just plastic. You have Lexus inside of the headlight itself. Three main LED headlight units up here. Further down, we do have some fake vents going on here. I do wish this was open, but at least it has some functionality because we do have an LED fog light located at the very bottom. Beautiful line flow here. Again, creating this line. So you have this line connected with the line that goes in here. Looking beautiful. Nice chamfer here as well. Coming around to the grill, and you can see that the entire grill is completely open except for this piece in the middle. And this has to do with regulations, saying that you do need to have some sort of structured piece in the middle of the grill. This new grill, I love that it goes from some patterns in the bodywork itself to a little bit of opening here and then it turns into this gray color at the very bottom. Have a nice dynamic flow to it. You have front mounted camera right there, big Lexus logo in the middle of course. You have the lower lip being almost blacked out or very dark gray in this case. Now coming around to the side view, this color just looks fantastic. This is the top spec. This is the luxury. This one as spec comes out at just over $73,000. We do have 21 inch wheels here with two 35 millimeter wide tires both in the front and in the rear. Usually I'm not a fan of this type of style of wheel but in this case this being the luxury trim or spec for the RX I do think it actually suits this car and it rides so smooth. It's one of the smoothest riding SUVs I've ever driven, specifically in full EV mode. It's such a joy to drive. You have a lot of lines going on here. This typical Lexus styling again coming back here. We have a chrome piece up here. I do think this actually suits the Lexus when you look at it. The trim piece is to have a splash of chrome onto this car. You do have indicators in the side mirrors as well, in addition to the rear mount, the, the uh, 360 camera located down here. Further down, we do have one key line that looks pretty interesting. You can see the reflections here, how this is reflected in the bodywork with this massive upswing in this area. And this is one detail that I'm not so sure about because everything else on this car, every line is very sharp. And then you have this very soft curvature down here at the bottom. But overall, it's a great looking SUV. Coming around to the rear end, and we do have, of course, the Lexus light bar intact here. 
for the RX. I love this design because it's so big and juicy on the sides here. You have some nice pattern connecting to the front grille. And then it goes into a thinner piece, very thin, right underneath the Lexus logo. Coming back, of course, growing as we come out to the side on the other end. You do have LED indicators and reverse lights down here as well, in addition to the rear mounted camera located right there. Further down, we do have some silver trim piece at the bottom. I do think it looks great. We don't have any visible exhaust pipes on this. I don't think that is necessary for this type of vehicle anyway. And again, these fake vents coming back in the rear end as well, similar to what we have in the front end. Let's open up the hatch and let's see how much space we have back here for the 2024 Lexus RX. You do have power folding rear seats. If you need to fold this, you can always use these buttons on the side to fold them back and forth. As you can see, pretty easy to do. It takes a little while, but if you need more storage, all you gotta do is fold those down. You have a 12 volt outlet here as well, in addition to a first aid kit and a household outlet on this side. There's not really a lot of storage underneath. You do have some storage right here for the charging cable and that's pretty much it. Let's have a look at the absolutely stunning interior of this 2024 Lexus RX 450H Plus. First of all, you do have the Mark Levinson uh, optional sound system in this one. You also have some suede here. An overview of the interior. These seats are absolutely fantastic. They're so comfortable. And this is a car that I would definitely want to take on longer road trips because it is so comfortable and you also have a lot of range. You have some suede here as well on the sides of the seats. These are heated and ventilated and of course power adjustable down here. So let's jump in here, have a look at what's going on with this interior. Let's have a look at the sticker. As you can see, the base price comes out to $68,730. This one is specced to $76,305. You can see all the options right there if you want to pause this. Nori Green Pearl, one of my favorite colors for the Lexus RX. So inside here, we do have a seven inch gauge cluster. This is not a 12.3 inch like we're used to seeing, specifically in this price range. Some might wanna have the 12.3 uh, inch that the Lexus has put in their new newer models, but I actually think seven inches works totally fine for me. You do have the fuel gauge being analog on the sides and also the uh, EV range right here on the sides. Other than that, it's a pretty small screen in the middle, works, works totally fine for me. This is the 14 inch infotainment screen and this is a great integration because they did some styling around here you have all the buttons for the heated and cooled ventilated seats right here i love this design beautifully done by lexus these dials for the temperature ac button right here fan speed very easy to use and even though the fan speed and pretty much everything else is in the software i'm still glad that they kept the uh, dials for the temperature, at least this being still analog. It comes with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We can go in and check out the settings that we have inside of the software, all wheel drive. You can see what's going on with the motors on this car, energy flow, pretty cool to see this as well. If we put it in drive, you can see that it starts to show you how the energy in this car is flowing within the system itself. Very nice, put it back into park. We do have some more settings here. We do have Bluetooth devices, driving assist. I like to turn, as you probably know right now, by now all the driving assistants. I really don't like to have a lot of them turn off. We do have one more knob in here, and that is the volume for the radio. Further down, we do have some interesting looking vents. Have a look at these vents here. They're separated by this trim piece but this still adjusts both the top part and the lower part. Putting it into reverse, gonna pop up the rear view camera. And you also have 360 camera here with some underside of the car view. As we start to move backwards, you can see that it starts to render what is going on underneath the vehicle itself. Very cool and super crisp uh, resolution for the screen as well. The screens have always been a strong feature of every single Lexus, so it's no surprise that the camera is this good. Further down, you do have two USB-Cs here, more USBs down here, one regular USB and a USB-C there as well. You can cover this up if you want to. You also have your wireless phone charger down here and some more storage right here in the middle. Further back, you do have this very typical Toyota gear selector with the parking here. Going to drive by pushing it to the left, Left and backwards and going into reverse pushing it to the left and upwards now this is the cool stuff here with the hybrid version you can choose if you want to have it in full 
EV mode, if you or if you want to turn on the engine, you can do that manually, or you can have it in auto mode so the car itself figures out what the best solution is. If you have it in EV or a combination of both. Very cool setup from Lexus, and I do love this system because you still get a lot of range, just pure electric range. I'm only down to 12 now, but total comes out to close to 40 miles of range which is great for a car like this. Parking brake located right here. The armrest opens both this way and this way. So you can open it from either side. And down here you do have just some storage, no, no connections at all inside of the armrest. We talked about the seats, great looking seats. You can adjust them from the back seat if you wanna do that. If you feel like your passenger in front of you is annoying you, taking up too much space, all you gotta do is just adjust them like this from the back seat. Moving on to the steering wheel, this is again a great looking steering wheel. Lexus just does fantastic steering wheels. I'm a little bit confused why we have paddles since this is a CVT gearbox. Never really works that great with CVT gearboxes because it feels like it's just revving and revving and revving and it doesn't matter if you use the paddles or not but we still have them here. You also have the controls for the volume here and the controls for the cruise control settings in this area. One interesting feature is I was looking for a uh, sport button down here, but it's actually inside of the software now. So Lexus decided to put the drive modes inside of the software instead of having some sort of toggle down here. So we have normal, eco and sport. And as you can see, if we switch these up, it's gonna switch up the layout and the design of the gauge cluster right there. So let's keep it in sport for now. On the left side, you do have the memory settings for your seat housed in this gloss black material that I'm not the biggest fan of. Light settings are on the left side of the steering wheel and the wipers are right here on the right side. Looking up top, we do have this beautiful panoramic sunroof that goes all the way back to the rear seats. If you want additional lighting in here, probably a good option to get this. You can also close it up here by using these uh, buttons up in the roof. As you know, see, it's close everything up. But let's keep it semi open right now for when we take this for a drive later on. Lexus has a very cool integration with door handles. This is all uh, electric, so you just push this button and it pops it up. If the electrics fail, you can always open it up manually by pulling this two times. One cool detail about this door is see how far, how big the door opening is. And this is so you don't get your uh, pants or shoes dirty. So the entire side of the uh, car opens up all the way down to the very black trim down here. When I first saw this, it looks like just this is the opening part of the door, but as you can see, it opens up the entire side of the car. Very cool feature. Let's jump in to the back seat and have a look at how much space we have back here. I'm 6'1". And I think I'm gonna fit pretty easily back here. Legroom is fantastic in this car. I have plenty of legroom. One thing that adds to the luxury in this is on the sides here, you do have some buttons to recline the seat backwards a little bit, which adds to the comfort and more luxurious feel. I could sit here forever and wouldn't be a problem at all going on a long road trip in this car. And as you can see, I have plenty of headroom as well. Now folding down the center armrest, you're going to find two cup holders that pops up and you also have some more storage right there. Last but not least for the back seat, you do have three climate zones. So you have two for the front and one for the rear. And in addition to that, you also have heated and ventilated seats back here with a couple of USB-C ports. All right, let's take the 2024 Lexus RX 450H Plus for a drive. We're starting off in EV mode. First thing you notice in pretty much any Lexus you buy these days is just how comfortable this is. It's extremely comfortable. And I just reviewed the Big Brother, the Lexus LX 600, which is about 120, 110, 120 thousand dollars, something like that. This one has spec seventy three thousand dollars. I actually think this is more comfortable than the Lexus LX. The LX is a body on frame beast. It's super capable off road, but I would definitely go with this one. Uh, probably not the 450H. I would rather have the a little bit more powerful 366 horsepower RX 500H with the F Sport package, which uh, sets up the suspension for a little bit more um, sporty handling. And you also get the F Sport package, which also 
blacks everything out. It just looks better to me. Uh, and you get more power. Here's the six in this one. It's about 6.2 seconds. The uh, 500H does it in about 5.9 seconds. So it's not a, a lot faster than this one. But the big difference in the drivetrain be between the two models, the 500H and the 450H Plus, or like we're driving right now, is that this one has a CVT gearbox and the 500H comes with a um, six-speed automatic and that is a big deal for me because I want to have I I just don't like CVTs even though in this one probably feels like one of the best cars with a CVT gearbox uh, because it ju is just so smooth and s everything is so seamless so let's come to a stop right here no one behind us at least right now so let's do it real quick a stop and let's floor it And we're up to 60. So it's not the fastest car, but that's not what this is about. This is about comfort and just cruising along, going long distances. And if that's what you're looking for, I would probably choose the luxury spec like we have here. Even though the uh, the pricing is going to be very similar between a fully loaded 500H and uh, this one as this one is spec. Both comes out to about 73, 74 thousand dollars. But the comfort in here, it, it, it always surprises me when I go from other vehicles and then into either a Mercedes or a Lexus. They both have this special feel to them. Uh, they, they, they feel solid. There's no creaks or rattles in here. Even though we're riding on 21 inch wheels, it's still very comfortable going over these bumps on the road. You can barely feel them. And I think that is one of the Lexus strong points is the ride quality. And in addition to that, we have these fantastic seats that are also some of the best in the business. So, so this is definitely a car that you want to take on longer road trips. Let's go out and do a quick little motor uh, highway run here. And just to show you how quiet this is, you're still going to hear the droning noise of the CVT and the four liter uh, on the four cylinder specifically now when you're stepping on it <laughs> i mean it sounds like you're using so much fuel with cvts because it just keeps revving and revving so now we're doing we're cruising at 70 miles per hour and i can do this all day i'm also a huge fan of this interior layout with the seven inch uh, digital gauge cluster that we have and the 14 inch infotainment screen implementing a 14 inch in an sort of over stylized car like this it's not an easy thing to do because you need to make have it feel like it's part of the rest of the interior and I do think Lexus has done a good job with that here by creating this outer framing for the uh, infotainment screen even though it is 14 inches. What I love about this drivetrain is if we put it in full just EV mode this is not one of these cars that when you step on it and you're in EV mode the internal combustion engine is going to kick in. This one will stay a hundred percent in EV mode for as long as you want to, to or of course until you run out of range. So now we're on the highway just using the electric motor and it's even more quiet in this uh, mode. I just love the setup that we have here. A true hybrid we can switch between either having full EV up to 37 uh, miles if you want to have a combination of both you want or if you want to let the computer decide for you. The handling is still decent in this car, even though we don't have the F-Sport suspension, it still takes corners pretty flat and uh, well. It's not a uh, sporty SUV to drive. If you want that, you gotta go with the F-Sport package. But for overall, this is pretty much the total package that you want in a luxury midsize SUV that you can take for longer road trips. My final thoughts on the 2024 Lexus RX 450h Plus is it's a fantastic car. As I said, specifically if you're looking for, uh, if you have a long commute every day, the range is great, over 500 miles on one single tank. You can have it in EV mode if you want. The internal combustion is always going to be there for you. The pricing, yes, it is an expensive car, but it's also a lot of car for the money. Personally, as I said earlier, I would for the same money, I would probably go with the a little bit more powerful 
F Sport uh, RX 500H, but ju that is just my opinion. This is still a fantastic car to drive and design wise i also like what they did with the refresh both in the uh, for the exterior and also this gorgeous interior 